So hello everyone. Today I will speak about product information within Odoo. So as an acronym, we can use PIM, which is a well-known acronym for this kind of software. So I will explain you what's a PIM and how uh, it could impact the product life cycle within the company. And then I will explain how we implemented Odoo, uh, uh, PIM within Odoo. And I will show you through a, a small demo. Originally, this project started uh, in collaboration with Acretion, who, who, has, who had the same need as us for one of customer. And now we use it um, at a bigger, large scale uh, within our customer, especially for e-commerce or for company managing big uh, product catalog. So I don't know if you saw the talk from Sebastian and from Hector yesterday, but this is complementary to that as it could uh, manage the origin of the data pushed to the website. So. What's the PIM? So PIM means product information management. So the goal of such software is to collect and centralize product information. So you are allowed to enrich product information with, within your software and finally to spread it uh, across other platform. So on the market, there are a lot of uh, known PIM software. Probably the mo most known are Akeneo, PIM Core, and Solid Paper. So what's a PIM? Um, I make the difference between two kinds of data. The auto information are all data required to deal with the product within the company or during commercial transaction. For example, it's the price, the taxes, the stock, the name, the SKU. So in other words, this is um, the most common fields within an ERP. Uh, and on the other side, you have the cold information. So this is not mandatory, but it strongly contribute to push yourself and your management. And it increases information provided to the end customer. Uh, for example, um, cold information are medias like videos, images, smart description, specification, how to and whatever you want, but it's a kind of complementary information um, allowing to provide a better clear view on the product. So here is the life cycle. Um, so the first step is the product onboarding. So usually it's the product creation in the ERP. The main input for that is the auth information. Starting from that, uh, you can start to manage your business process flow as you can start to buy your product. You can start to enter stock. You can start uh, eventually to sell it if you want, but on parallel, you can also start the digital asset management phase, which is the completion of the products thanks to cold information. As soon as both information are gathered, you reach a better quality, data quality. And then you can spread all this information across other platforms. Uh, it could be an e-commerce, it could be marketplaces, it could be uh, some printable support or whatever you want. The idea is to um, push all the completed information um, outside. So why do we need to embed it uh, within Odoo? Usually, for that, people are using an external solution, but um, this uh, way of work uh, triggers some data duplication. Uh, it leads to additional costs because you need to subscribe for, ex for um, extra licenses for another software. And also, it could limit the access to the information because um, for example, uh, ERP users doesn't access um, information within the PIM. So 
and PIM users doesn't necessarily access the ERP information. So you can only have uh, a partial view on the product uh, depending of uh, your profile. So this is, was the main goal to integrate it within Odoo. So data is really centralized. You do not have heavy connector to maintain and all Odoo users and PIM users can access the same information really easily as everything is really integrated. So you can cross PIM data and ERP data really easily in your in Odoo. So here is the data model. F first, uh, you see the, the product attribute. Uh, please does, do not make any confusion with the variance in Odoo, it's different. Here, a product attribute is a property of the product. So in other words, it's a new field in the database. So the PIM in Odoo allows you to create new fields on the product form. So properties here, product attributes, are regrouped by product attribute group. So the goal of that is to have the power of the display of the information on the screen. So as all new fields you created are structured within dedicated group, in there we can you can manage the order of the field and so on. It's really useful to structure at the screen. You always see in the demo how it should look like. Besides of that, um, product attributes are uh, linked to a product attribute set, which is a set of attributes. So it defines the type of the product. So one product is linked to one attribute set. For example, imagine uh, you sell uh, some food um, and imagine you sell cereal bar. So cereal bar is uh, the attribute set. So product is linked to the attribute set and the related properties, so the attribute, like ingredients, uh, like allergy uh, information and stuff like that are linked to the product set. So now let's have a look um, how it looks like uh, with Nodu. So uh, we regrouped all features under a single point of, of access called PIM, where you have several menus. So it also allows a different view for product um, for PIM users because they don't need the same information as an ERP user. For example, a PIM user don't care about uh, stocks. So currently the view is really um, simple, but we are um, dealing with new features like here adding some additional columns to display some attributes dynamically. So it's not yet done, it's on the roadmap, but we are working on. So let's start. I will uh, create some attribute group to structure my information. So I'll take the sample of a cereal bar. So let's create a first group for ingredients. Another one for the allergy information. And a third one for the storage information. So these are three groups for attributes. Now I will create the attributes in each group. So let's go in product attributes menu. So I create a first attribute ingredients, which will be a text field within the attribute group ingredients. I can manage the order of these fields within the group. So let's put first one. I create the attribute set later. And I will define this attribute as searchable. I will show later uh, what's the use of that. So the second information, sorry, I will create another property, which is uh, gluten-free, for example. 
no, Crouton free, which is a boolean, and I will set this attribute in the RLG information, and I will allow mass editing. I will show after for mass editing. Let's create another one, which is RLG information. So I will set that as text as well in the RLG, which is searchable. Let's create now for the storage. So storage, which is a select field where I will set uh, some options. So I will define it in the storage and I will put the different values. So in ambient or in the fridge. So these are all um, the attributes I created. I will create the last one, which is about the ingredient, veggie, okay, a boolean in ingredients group. So as you can see, it's really simple to create new attributes. So all this action, all this creation triggered some new columns directly in the database, just like the fields uh, in Odoo. So technically, an attribute here is um, an inheritance of year model fields from the standard. So now let's create an attribute set with all these attributes. So I will create the attribute set serial bar. I'll include all the attributes I created. So these fields will only be available for products of serial bars. I will make the link after that. But now let's have a look at the bottom of the screen. We included um, a way to manage the completeness of a product. So because it's always difficult to raise an overview of your progress within the product completion. So um, let's configure that part. So let's imagine that for a serial bar to be complete, to be considered as complete, to be uh, spread on other platform, I need an images. So this is half of the completion. I need ingredients. This is 20%. And I need <coughs> origin, which is, again, 20% and the storage. So by setting that, it means that to be complete, I need to fill in all this information for a serial bar. So now let's have a look of um, how it looks like on the product. So let's go back on the product view. I created a bar with the auth information. So all the information required by the ERP. And now, I will start my digital asset management phase. Uh, so the first step will be to define which attribute set um, is needed for this product. So I will select serial bar. So immediately the completion appears and it's not complete for the moment. I'll save the product and refresh my screen just to display the products. So here in attributes, this part is dynamic. So it's strongly linked to the attribute set you selected here. So I only view the attribute of this attribute set. So it allows to have really light screen. It prevents to have heavy screen with a lot of fields uh, useless. So about the completion now. 
So my product is not complete. This field indicates to the users which information needs to be filled in to be complete. So let's put the ingredients. The origin. And finally, the storage. Let's save it. So now the only missing information is the images. So let's have a look at the completion rate. My product is completed as 50%. Now let's manage the images. So for the images, we are using the OCA add on storage image product. But we added a new features allowing to manage images thanks to drag and drop. So let's test it. I just have to um, edit my product. I go on my laptop, I select the image, drag, drop, and that's it. So now my product is complete. So about images. Um, if you, have, if you have several images, you can manage the order thanks to drag and drop as well. And for customers, uh, we created some automaticated process just to import uh, the images from an FTP server or something like that. But we did not find any yet any way uh, yet to do it as an, in a generic um, way because the starting point for that is generally the naming convention of the images. So it's really, I would say, not, not a generic and really different per customers. So do you remember I flagged the product attribute ingredients as searchable? What does it mean? It means that this field will be automatically and dynamically added to the search view. So if I go back on the products, if I begin to type coconuts, ingredients is automatically available here so that you can use it immediately. About the other feature, for example, veggie, no, it's most not this one. Gluten-free, I set it has allow mass editing. So for that, we are using the OCA add-ons mass editing. And this add-on works by um, editing group. So we created an editing configuration per attribute group. So as soon as you check that, you will get an option to mass edit the whole attribute from uh, attribute group. So let's have a look. If I go back on my product bar, if I check it, here I have mass operation allergy. And all the fields are here. If I take another attribute from another group, let's imagine the storage. Let's check it as mass editing. I need to refresh to add the action in the menu. Go back on products bar. And now I have another menu entry just for storage. So it, this way of work, uh, avoid to have um, messy screens with a lot of fields. So all fields are structured by attribute group, just like on the screen. About the groups, so here you have this order, but if you go back in the attribute group menu, you can switch the group or within the group, you can switch the order of the field so that you pilot how you want to display the information 
on the product. So I inverted that part here. So for the moment, that's it for the, the demo. So we are now completing the solution with an advanced Excel import export feature just to ease use the way to manage uh, all the products. But um, by the experience of our customer, there are now mainly uses uh, mass editing and Excel is used for creation uh, mainly. So let's go back on my presentation. So I'd like to thank all contributors uh, who are working on that until now, which is mostly Akritian Axon and uh, Simone Orsi. Everyone made a huge job to reach that goal. And some customers uh, have succeeded by switching from Akineo to Odupim uh, really easily in just a few days or a few weeks of, of work. So I think this project begins to be really mature. Currently, it's available under the Shop Invader organization, but it's not really only linked to Shop Invader. As you, you saw, it's really generic and could be used by everyone. So we are dreaming to push it on the OCA umbrella. So we are wondering if you are interested by that. I will send an email to the mailing list just to allow you to vote. And if there are some interest, we will be really happy to, to push it. So thanks to all the OCA sponsors. And I don't know if you have any question. I would be really happy to answer you on that. Thank you, Cedric. We have one question from uh, Frederick. Yeah. Uh, absolutely push that to the OCA. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Any more questions around? Uh, we have another question. What are the deficits if you compare it with the Akineo standard? Currently, um, the only thing you lose is Akineo is really powerful to allow uh, advanced search. Uh, the feature of research uh, in the product is more uh, user friendly. And uh, this way, we are still working on that to improve that. And the other part, which will be solved in the coming weeks, is that in Akineo, you can manage um, the attributes you want to see on your list view. So, uh, but that now, since we are on Odoo 13 and 14, we are allowed to do that in Odoo, so it won't be a difference anymore in the future. And I didn't show it, but you can also, it's fully multi-company multi compliant, so you, you can create a company dependent on attributes. And that you cannot do it in Akineo. So Frederick says for now, I mean, and, and then it says, but don't you uh, address this with ES? Enterprise Studio must, he must be meaning? Yeah, it, it could be. In, in a way, in config Elastic studio. Search. Elastic search, he means. Sorry? Elastic search. I don't understand the question. Sorry. <laughs> Can you, Frederick, maybe clarify?
if the question is is that only dedicated to elastic search, the answer is no, because uh, for our current customer, yes, we are pushing all these attributes to elastic search for shopping builder e-commerce, but we are also using that in other contexts uh, like um, Excel files uh, to marketplaces and stuff like that. And also for one of our customer, uh, this is used mainly they are working with a showroom where salesperson need to have a lot of information to provide to the customer um, because the customer usually has to do some choice choice in a showroom. So it's really important to being able to provide as much as information as possible about the product. So yeah, there are a lot of usage of such um, add-on. Okay, so he says, uh, but uh, Frederick says, you said search is an advantage in Akineo, and I think Elasticsearch is exactly the tool that you use to improve the search, don't you? Oh, yeah, I, I understand. Uh, yes, um, for the moment we use a search from Odoo, but yes, it was an idea I also had is, um, to improve this search by using uh, Elasticsearch indexes. Yes, it could be uh, indeed a good option uh, to push up the, this feature. But for the moment, uh, we never work on that. So it means uh, using Elasticsearch to search within Odoo? Yeah. Yes, that's a good, that would be a good idea in general, right? To use Elasticsearch in general to speed up any search. Could be, but it's a big challenge, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, now um, Hector asks, once you have uh, uh, every attribute set up, how do you deal with to push these fields to external structure to share across other platforms? So for Shopping Vader, we and other platform, we use the ER export model for Modu to allow the, the customer to configure by itself the export. So we made some um, predefined uh, export configuration. And when the customer uh, needs to add an attribute, he creates the attributes and then he changes the configuration directly in Odoo in the settings menu. And that's it. Okay, uh, let's see, is there, uh, what are we on time? So I think, uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, we have one minute left. Thank you very much, uh, he says, uh, Frederick, uh, great talk. And thanks for your attention. <laughs> so I, I will send the email now just to to see uh, the opinion about pushing that on the CA. I hope it will be positive. Good. Okay, thank you very much, Cedric. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye.